So here I am riding Lovey, and we are warming up. So I'm looking for energy at the walk, nice and loose and free walk, where she's moving forward. And if I don't feel like she is, I'll tap her with my dressage whip back on her inside hind leg to come up and stretch. So all of these techniques are so important to creating, again, the self-carriage now under saddle or while you're, you know, while you're riding. I'm, of course, using a bareback pad and a stop and turn, or you can call it a bozelle. So this is a regular head stall. Um, I acquired many years ago learning to, to work cattle, and I replaced the bit with a stop and turn, so I'm bitless. This is, can be a very extreme piece of equipment if you don't know how to use it well. I use this because I get the lateral that I want. I don't have it underneath like a rope halter. Um, and I always start horses off in the rope halter and tie the, the lead rope underneath of them. And as we progress, we progress into this bozelle, stop and turn. And we don't progress into this piece of equipment until the horse can maintain a lot of their own carriage. Because I don't want her leaning into this. The lariat's a hard piece of material, and she's got the metal piece very similar to a curb bit underneath of her chin. And I don't want her leaning into this. I don't want her uh, fearful of feeling trapped by this piece of equipment. Some horses do have that fear. So if you'll notice as we're walking around, what am I looking for again? I'm looking for her to maintain her rhythm, her tempo with relaxation. And I enjoy the bare back because I can feel her back opening up underneath of me or tightening. And what am I looking for? with her frame. I can see her frame and what does it look like? That she's presenting more slack in the reins. That the more she can maintain and keep this even position, this headset on her own, because look at my reins. I'm just holding my position right now. I am not forcing her. I'm not holding her like this and get her, look at me, now I'm forcing it. Look at how much contact and tension I have in my reins. And I'm getting her behind the bit and her neck's getting all squished. You don't want that. You want to keep feeling this hind end underneath of you. And if she starts to slow down, I will tap her gently, tickle her with this dressage whip if she doesn't match the tempo in my hips. So right now, she's starting to set her own headset. This is her own unique self-carriage right now. And she's in training. She's not advanced. She's not going to be able to carry her headset higher right now. She's just not. So you have to be aware of where your horse is and what the different phases or levels look like in the training. And so as I ask her into the trot, can she maintain that head carriage? And if she raises her head, I'm just holding my position with my hands. And if she raises her head, I'll squeeze my reins and block that. It's called the box. Now, and then once she starts to soften and relax, I will relax and let her carry herself. So there she's starting to, you see slack in the reins. So she's very straight and very even, very rhythmic. And I'll even encourage her to stretch even more down and open up her shoulders and her back. And this is very similar to the free lunge that you were seeing with Smokey and the online lunge you were seeing with Lovey. Of course, I've taught Lovey the shoulder in, and I've been working with really loosening and suppling her shoulder and her pull because she was very stressed and very tight as an ex-racehorse. So I'm not sure how well she'll be able to pick up her canter but we will give it a try since we've just started this, even if it's just for a few strides. So I'm gonna set her up and see if I can encourage more, more movement from the hind end. I don't want her to speed up, people. Remember, we don't want her rushing. We want her relaxed, confident, balanced, engaged mentally and physically. So she sped up and rushed, and that trot got really bouncy. <laughs> There's no way. 
So I don't want to encourage that. That's not how I train. Let's see if I can set her up again and ask her to think about her hind end. She knows what I'm asking and to pick up the canter softly. So this is no different my embodiment in my request than when I'm on the ground. So for me, this tells me she's not mentally as engaged or relaxed as she needs to be. So again, I don't want to push her into that canter. I want her to pick it up effortlessly. Nope, gonna slow her down again. Gave her a little pop with the whip to try a little harder to think, and that's good enough. I'm gonna now bring her back down to some relaxation. Good girl. You're doing great, baby. Good girl. Good. There we go. So she did speed up into the canter and I accepted that that time because I want her to pick the canter up, but she wasn't rushing. And the rushing is when the horse falls apart underneath of you. You feel all the body parts. It's heavy. It's clumsy. Though you know the horse is stressed, and it stresses you out. And you both lose your balance. But Lovey was able to pick up a bigger trot, maintain her rhythm, maintain her frame until she could pick up that canter to part. Good girl, love. Good girl. Good. Good girl. So there's a difference between speeding up and rushing. Rushing, the whole body comes apart and you can tell the horse is anxious. Speeding up, that's fine. And I don't want her picking up her head. Come on. There we go, come on. Good. Woo, watch your feet. Good girl, good. So even in that big trot into our halt, she maintains her frame. That's her self-carriage. I'm not holding her there. And it takes a lot of feel and timing to know when to hold it, when to release it, when to help her. Now we'll go to Smokey, who does a beautiful small canter and, you know, in collection and doesn't rush. We'll see how Smokey will pick up the trot. But this is how I start to help prepare the horse. And the biggest, the, the biggest um, awareness I'd like to bring to you is the difference between a horse rushing and speeding up and what it looks like. When she sped up, she pretty much maintained her confirmation. All right, so I don't want her hollowing out. I don't want to feel her pulling me. I don't want to feel five body parts. I want to feel her speed up, feel the whole body, and help her encourage into the canter. And, um, and then as we refine and she gets more strength and more balance, she'll be able to go more slowly into that canter. But your transitions in and out of the trot and your suppling, especially the shoulder in and the haunches in, the Travers is very, very important to this work as well because it asks them to use, and I'll show you a Smokey since he knows that so well, really asks them to use their hind end. Thank you, my dear. So now I'm on Smokey, my advanced horse, and I'm looking again for energy at the walk. And I'm also going to show you a lot more suppling, a lot more shoulder in as I warm up, as well as Travers, my haunch is in, but I'm going to do that at the trot. So I'm going to ask him into the trot and get him out of that little quarter horse jog because that doesn't serve any purpose right now. And I'm going to ask for the shoulder in more. 
So that is where I have more contact in my outside rain and less on my inside. And I will pick up the inside rain when I need to help him get back to maintaining. But right now, he's pretty much, look at the slack in my rain. It's very minimal contact. And he's very through. And if I want to, I'll kick his haunches in. And I don't want to lose energy, though. Smokey's balanced by nature, but not very impulse. Doesn't have a lot of impulsion. Doesn't have a lot of forward movement. But that's what would make him a great Western pleasure horse. He's built for that. Good boy. So here we go bending. And look at how easy it was for him to pick up that can, or I didn't ask for it. Now I am. So he's got a higher headset than Lovey, and that's what I want. A little more braking at the pole, a little pop in the hiney to keep going. There we go. And my posture is very important, sitting back behind his center of gravity, which is his girth, and asking him to use his hind end. There, good boy. And there's our stretch. So you can see, even if I were to trot him, which is part of his training, I want him to be able to trot evenly. This is part of training. Now I'm gonna set his head down there and ask him to maintain it, right there. So can he maintain his tempo, not speed up, not slow down? And I'm not holding him there. I'm gonna ask him to lower again, because I've taught him this. So it's really important if my horse lowers his nose that he doesn't fall on his forehand. How many of us can let our horses go and they maintain their rhythm? So that's part of how I will continue to develop Lovey and how he was developed to be able to handle this movement. Good boy. I love you too. I love you, Bubby. He's like, did I do a good job? Yes, of course, always. This is the connection piece of my method. All the work you do on the ground, the mind, body, and soul is taken into the riding. And, you know, you want your horses with you, don't you? Come, wake up. <laughs> Thank you. Please feel free to leave comments or questions. And may you always be one with your horse. Mm -hmm.